नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय श्रद्धया त्रय विभाग योगा द डिविशंस ऑफ फेथ टेक्स्ट वन अर्जुन उवाच य शास्त्र विधि उत्सृज्य यजंते श्रद्धायान्वित निष्ठा तो का कृष्ण सत्व अहो रजस्तम अर्जुन इंक्वायर्ड ओ कृष्ण वॉट इज द सिचुएशन ऑफ दर्स हू डू नॉट फॉलो द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ स्क्रिप्चर बट वर्शिप अकॉर्डिंग टू दर ओन इमेजिनेशन आर दे इन गुडनेस इन पैशन ओर इन इग्नोरेंस टेक्स टू श्री भगवान उवाच ignorance. Now hear about this. Text three. Satva no rupa sarvasya shraddha bhavati bharata shraddha mayo yam purusho yo yat shraddha sa eva sah. O son of Bharata, according to one's existence under the various modes of nature. one evolves a particular kind of faith the living being is said to be of a particular faith according to the modes he has acquired there's too much of background noise please can everybody just mute except for the people talking reciting okay i have muted everybody it should be okay now okay text 4 यजंते सात्विका देवान यक्ष रक्षम श्री राजस प्रेतान भूता गनम स्चन्य यजंते तामस जनः मेन इन द मोड ऑफ गुडनेस वर्शिप द डेमीगॉड्स दोस इन द मोड ऑफ पैशन वर्शिप द डीमन्स एंड दोस इन द मोड ऑफ इग्नोरेंस वर्शिप गोस्ट्स एंड स्पिरिट्स text 5 and 6 a shastra vihitam ghoram tapyante ye tapo janah damba hankara samyukta kama rag balan vitah karasayanat sharirastam bhuta gramam achetasah mam chevanatta sharirastam tanvidhi asura nischayan those who undergo severe austerities and penances not recommended in the scriptures performing them out of pride and egoism who are impelled by lust and attachment who are foolish and who torture the material elements of the body as well as the super soul dwelling within are to be known as demons x7 aharastva api sarvasya trivido bhavati priya yagnas tapas tatha danam tesham bhed mimam shunu even the food each person prefers is of three kinds according to the three modes of material nature the same is true of sacrifices austerities and charity Now hear of the distinctions between them. Text eight. Are you satva bala rogya sukha priti vivardana rasya snigda stira ridaya ahara satvika priya. Foods dear to those in the mode of goodness increase the duration of life, purify one's existence, and give strength. health happiness and satisfaction such foods are juicy fatty wholesome and pleasing to the heart 
text 9. Katva amla lavanti ushna tichna ruksha vidainaha ahara raja shashyasta duhaka so kamaya pradaha. Foods that are bit too bitter, too sour, salty, hot, pungent, dry and burning are dear to those in the mode of passion. Such foods cause distress, misery and disease. Text 10. Yatyam gatrasam purti puryashitam chayat. Ujjishtam apichamityam bhojanam tamas priyam. Food prepared more than three hours before being eaten. Food that is tasteless, decomposed and putrid. And food consisting of remnants and untouchable things is dear to those in the mode of darkness. Text 11. A fala a falankan shvir yajno vidhi dishto ya ijayate yashtavyam evati manaha samadhaya sa satvikaha. Of sacrifices, the sacrifice performed according to the directions of scripture as a matter of duty by those who desire no reward is of the nature of goodness. Text 12. Abhisandhaya tu falam dambartam apichevayat ijayate bharata shreshta tam yagyam vidhi rajasam. But the sacrifice performed for some material benefit or for the sake of pride, O chief of the Bharatas, you should know to be in the mode of passion. Text 13. Vidihinam ashrashtanam mantrahinam adakshinam shraddha virahitam yagnam tamasam parichakshate. Any sacrifice performed without regard <clears throat> for the directions of scripture, without distribution of prashadam, spiritual food, without chanting of Vedic hymns and remuneration remunerations to the priests and without faith is considered to be in the mode of ignorance. Text 14. Deva Dvija Guru Pragna Poojanam Saucham Arjavam Brahmacharyam Ahimsacha Shariram Tapa Uchate. Austerity of the body consists in worship of the Supreme Lord. The Brahmanas, the spiritual master and superiors like the father and mother, and in cleanliness, simplicity, celibacy, and non-violence. Text 15. Anudvega karam vakyam satyam priya hitam chayat svadhaya bhyasanam chayva vanmayam tapa uchyate Austerity of speech consists in speaking words that are truthful, pleasing, beneficial, and not agitating to others, and also in regularly reciting Vedic literature. Text 16. Mana prashada samyatvam maunyam atma vinigraha bhavasam sudir iti yat tapo manasam uchate and satisfaction, simplicity, gravity, self-control, and purification of one's existence are the austerities of the mind. Text 17. Shraddhaya paraya taptam tapastatri vidham naraha afalankam shibhir yuktahi satvikam parichakshate this threefold austerity, performed with transcendental faith by men not expecting material benefits, but engaged only for the sake of the Supreme, is called austerity in goodness. Text 18. Satkara manapujartham tapodambina chaivayat 
क्रियते तद इह प्रोक्तम राजसम चलम अद्रुवम Penance performed out of pride and for the sake of gaining respect, honor and worship is said to be in the mode of passion. It is neither stable nor permanent. Text 19. Mudha granetmano yad vidaya kriyate tapaha parasyotsadhanartham va Penance performed out of foolishness with self-torture or to destroy or injure others is said to be in the mode of ignorance. Text 20. Datvyam iti yaddanam diyate nupakarine deshe kale cha patre cha taddanam satvikam smritam Charity given out of duty, without expectation of return, at the proper time and place, and to a worthy person, is considered to be in the mode of goodness. Text 21. Yattu pratyupakarartham phalam uddhisya vapunaha diyate cha pariklishtam taddanam rajasam smritam but charity performed with expectation of some return or with a desire for brutal results or in a grudging mood is said to be charity in the mode of passion. Text 22. Adesha kali yaddanam apatre bhyascha diyate asatkritam avagnyatam tattamasam udharatam and charity performed at an impure place, at an improper time, to unworthy persons or without proper attention and respect is said to be in the mode of ignorance. Text 23. Om Tat Sat Iti Nirdesho Brahmanastri Vedasmritaha Brahmanastena Vedascha Yagnascha Vihita Pura from the beginning of creation, the three words Om Tat Sat were used to indicate the supreme absolute truth. These three symbolic representations were used by Brahmanas while chanting the hymns of the Vedas and during sacrifices for the satisfaction of the supreme. Text 24. Tasmad Om Iti Udhartya Yagna Dana Tapakriya Pravartante vidhanokta satatam brahma vadinam. Therefore, transcendentalists undertaking performances of sacrifice, charity, and penance in accordance with scriptural regulations begin always with Om to attain the Supreme. Text 25. Tad iti anabhi sandhya phalam yagna tapakriya dana kriyascha vividaha kriyante moksha kankshbihi. Without desiring fruitive results, one should perform various kinds of sacrifice, penance and charity with the word tat. The purpose of such transcendental activities is to get free from material entanglement. Text 26 and 27. Sad bhave sadhu bhave cha sad iti itat prayujayate prashaste karmani tatha sad chabda partha yujyate yagne tapasi dane cha stiti sad iti chochyate Karma chaiva tad arthayam sad iti eva bi diate. The absolute truth is the objective of devotional sacrifice and it is indicated by the word sat. The performer of such sacrifice is also called sat, as are all works of sacrifice, penance, and charity, which, true to the absolute Lute nature are performed to please the supreme person, O son of Britta. Text 28. 
अश्रद्धायाहुतम दातम तपस्तप्तम कृतम चयत असद इति उच्चते पार्थ न च तत्प्रेतन इह एनीथिंग डन एज सैक्रिफाइस चैरिटी और पेनेंस विदाउट फेथ इन द सुप्रीम ओ सन ऑफ रिता इज इम्पर्मनेंट इट इज कॉल्ड असत and is useless both in this life and the next om tat sat iti shrimad bhagavad gita shu upanishad su brahma vidyayam yoga shastre shri krishna arjuna samvade shraddha tray vibhag yoga nama saptadasho adhyaya hari krishna thank you hari krishna thank you everyone thank you so much uh, pinky mata ji and kushu mata ji that was really really beautiful thank you very very much all right uh give me one minute and i will share my screen as soon as i know what i'm going to share okay mm -hmm. Okay, can you all see the screen? Yes, we can. Thank you very much. Just give me one minute. <clears throat> okay. Right. Okay. So we will continue on our journey of the seventeenth chapter, and today we'll be doing the verse number twelve. So the seventeenth chapter is divisions of faith. so um krishna here is replying to various questions that arjuna has asked and um uh this section we are talking about sacrifices and um yesterday devinam prabhu covered the um sacrifice in the mode of goodness i can hear some background sound i will just request everybody to please mute yourselves thank you so today we are going to do the verse 12 <clears throat> okay sorry right okay let's recite verse 12 abhishandhaya tu phalam dambhartam api chaivayat ejyate bharata shreshta tam yagnam vidhi rajasam translation in purport by shila proka shila proka ki jai but the sacrifice performed for some material benefit or for the sake of pride o chief of the bharatas you should know to be in the mode of passion i read the purport because it's so small sometimes sacrifices and rituals are performed for elevation to the heavenly kingdom or for some material benefits in this world such sacrifices or ritualistic performances are considered to be in the mode of passion So before we start, we'll just say our prayers. Om Agyanti Mirandasya Gyanan Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmay Shri Guru Be Namaha. E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Ganeshwari. वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंशकुर्दश कृपा सिंधु पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवासदि गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Hare Rama Rama Hare Hare Nama Om Nitadaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Ruti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Aschatya Deshatarine Uh 
Okay. All right. I think I have muted everybody. Thank you to all of you for joining every evening. I'm so glad to see all of you here. And so we will continue our discussion with this verse. It's actually quite a <clears throat> straightforward verse, but still there is a lot that we need to kind of understand because obviously um, what Krishna is saying is that sacrifice performed for some material benefit. Now, in the previous chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, um, in fact, we are being asked to perform sacrifice. What is what is sacrifice? I know that um, Divyaram Prabhu really covered it in depth, and we listened to also um, Chaitanya Charan Prabhu. Yeah. Um, so sacrifice is ceremony performed to please the supreme personality of Godhead. Now, for us, the the greatest joy that one gets is to make sacrifice for someone that you love. And we can take the example from our own lives that as parents, mother and father, they perform so many various sacrifices for their children, you know, to, to give them a good upbringing, to give them a good education, to give them good values. There are so many sacrifices that you, you do and it is all done out of love, right? So that's, that's kind of in the mode of goodness because you want to do those sacrifices. So sacrifice as such is natural. And yesterday we discussed it that how even in our material life, if you want to progress, you want some success, you are sacrificing sometimes time, energy, relationships, sometimes, you know, and, and that kind of suffers uh, when you are, you know, um, you have to sacrifice so many things if you want to become successful. Now here we are talking about um, sacrifice that is performed um, for the Lord, yes, but in the mode of passion where you are expecting some kind of material benefit or for the sake of pride. Now let us look in the Bhagavad Gita. So in chapter 3 verse 10, it says, the translation is, in the beginning of creation, the Lord of all creatures sent forth generations of men and demigods along with sacrifices for Vishnu and blessed them by saying, be thou happy for this yagya, sacrifice, because its performance will bestow upon you everything desirable for living happily and achieving liberation. So it says here that in the beginning of creation, there were men and demigods, right? And of course, along with the sacrifices that was meant for Vishnu. So men were expected to perform sacrifices to the various demigods in order to get favor from the demigods. And it is said that in, in this way, by cooperating with each other, um, one would live happily and achieve liberation. So in the purport, Prabhupada is talking about, and he's explaining this, the material creation by the Lord of creatures, Vishnu, is a chance offered to the conditioned souls to come back home, back to Godhead. The Lord of the living entities is the supreme personality of Godhead Vishnu. The Lord created this material world to enable the conditioned souls to learn how to perform yagyas, sacrifices, for the satisfaction of Vishnu. So that while in the material world, they can live very comfortably without anxiety, and after finishing the present material body, they can enter into the kingdom of God. That is the whole program for the conditioned soul. By performance of yagya, the conditioned souls gradually become Krishna conscious and become godly in all respect. So clearly it is being said here that the sacrifices is being performed for the satisfaction of Vishnu. And Krishna elsewhere in the Bhagavad Gita is giving us this verse, you know, where he says, Bhoktaram Yagyate Tapasu Sarva Loka Maheshwara. So he is the um, he is the one that one we have to sacrifice to, not to anybody else. Even when we are performing sacrifices to the various demigods, they have been put in place by Krishna. So 
through the various demigods also the sacrifices are actually being offered for the satisfaction of vishnu so it says clearly here that we are we are um, supposed to perform sacrifices yes the fact is that these sacrifices come under the karma kanda section so it is for material benefits right and which is why it's kind of performed in the mode of passion because you are expecting something back right but what what we are trying to understand here is that that is still you are still following the vedic injunctions in doing that you know because if you don't do that you will not be able to live in this world so it is it is recommended in the vedas that you perform these various uh, sacrifices for some kind of uh, material benefit and yes they are performed in the mode of passion because reason is because we are conditioned souls you see we are con conditioned souls so we are ob obliged to perform these yagyas because without that we will not be happy at all let's look at another interesting verse again this is from uh, chapter 3 of the bhagavad gita and verse 12 it says in charge of the various necessities of life the demigods being satisfied by the performance of yagya sacrifice will supply all necessities to you but he who enjoys such gifts without offering them to the demigods in return is certainly a thief so now let's look at the purport of it here okay so it says that the aim of life is attained by performance of yagyas if we forget the purpose of human life and simply take supplies from the agents of the lord for sense gratification and become more and more entangled in material existence which is not the purpose of creation certainly we become thieves and therefore we are punished by the laws of material nature so again over here in this in this verse in the purport it's saying that sometimes we are performing sacrifices and rituals for elevation to the heavenly kingdom or for some material benefits in the world and here it is being said krishna is saying yes we are allowed to perform those kinds of sacrifices but the difference is even when we are asking for material benefits we are keeping the supreme personality of godhead in the center so the sacrifice is in a sense that um this is about you know people who have that consciousness and who have the understanding that whatever i am getting is is a blessing from the supreme and thus i have to offer it back to him like we see it we see in um, most of you must have seen it that Uh, you know when you go to uh, holy places and especially if you've gone to um haridwar and you're taking a dip in the ganga um most of you must have noticed that you know you take the water of the ganga in your palm and you offer it back to ganga now you haven't got anything from elsewhere to offer it's the ganga water that you're giving back same way everything in this material creation has been created by the lord so the lord is saying that i have created this for you but do not forget to then offer it to me because if you don't do that then you are a thief because you are enjoying all these gifts that i have given without offering it to the demigods of course the demigods meaning then eventually it goes to the supreme lord so that is the discussion over here so there is this there is another aspect where we have people who are completely in the mode of uh, passion and perform these sacrifices not as an offering not keeping krishna in the center but for their own uh, material sense gratification and we'll come to that in one minute but before we go to that i also want to discuss one aspect where sometimes you know even as devotees we've discussed modes of material nature and i think all of us are very clear about how the modes are constantly acting on us the modes of goodness passion and ignorance and generally it doesn't happen that we are under the mode of influence of only one mode that is you know you're not in pure goodness or you're not in pure passion or pure ignorance they are all acting together with each other 
So even as devotees, when we are performing devotional services, sometimes it so happens that we come under the influence of the mode of passion. And as an example, you know, sometimes like if say there is a, a very, a very nice um, Kirtan leader, Kirtan singer, and you know, it, it, when, when, when comes under the mode of um, passion, under that influence, it's almost like that one is not um, performing the Kirtan for the pleasure of the Lord, but one is doing the Kirtan in order to um, get recognition and become famous. And there's that, um, so like it says over here that it's for the sake of pride. So there's this pride that comes in that, you know, um, I'm, I'm so well known and I, I'm, you know, everybody appreciates my singing. So somewhere we've lost the essence that what you're doing is um, you're doing it for the pleasure of Krishna. So that's, you know, it, it happens like whether it is Kirtan singer or sometimes we are performing, let's say, let's say that, you know, we are doing something. Um, we've gone to do some service, but at the back of our mind, we're thinking that I'm doing this service and I will get some material benefits in return. Um, Krishna will be pleased, so he will give me material benefits. Now, that is a side effect of performing devotional service. That will happen anyways, because that is what Krishna promises, that he looks after his devotees. You know, he loves his devotees, so he looks after. But if my consciousness is that I am doing this only so that I can get some material benefit, then that is considered to be sacrifice performed in the mode of passion. If my consciousness is that I am doing this service for the pleasure of Krishna and I have the faith and trust that Krishna will then look after me while I am in this material body and provide for me what he thinks is necessary for me to live in this body. We have to remember that because we are in this material body, of course, there are going to be needs. Of course, there are going to be demands. You know, you cannot think that um, I will be completely um, dis disinterested and not attached to the wants and needs of the body because that cannot happen. That's, you know, that's, uh, again, it's, then it, it is an illusion. So if we have this body, we have our needs, we, we have to fulfill those needs. We've got our duties and responsibilities towards our families. So, but the point is that having this faith and trust that when I am performing this yagya, I am doing it for the pleasure of my Lord. And then my Lord, of course, will look after me because that is what he says in the Gita, right? He he's, Krishna is telling us that, um, this is what I have done. I have created this, you know, so that yagyas are performed, the demigods are happy, and by mutual cooperation between the human beings and the demigods, then they are able to eventually, by doing these kinds of activities, eventually come to the stage where uh, they become more and more Krishna conscious and then transcend this. Right and transcend and then come to a stage where all sacrifices, all activities are being performed only and only for the pleasure of Krishna. And that actually is what Krishna consciousness is all about. Right? That is Krishna consciousness. And before we come to that point again, let us look at some of the um, personalities who have performed sacrifices in the mode of passion. So um, let's see, I'm sure everybody knows it. So who are these two personalities? Hiranyakashipu. Correct. Mm -hmm. The other one, if anybody else. Look for Ravan. <laughs> yes. So now we all know the story here, right? Now Ravana was actually a very, very great and learned scholar. You know, he, he, was, he was a great king, he was a great scholar, um, he had a lovely, uh, how do you call that, very opulent kingdom. So he had everything. And he was performing so many austerities and sacrifices, but 
he wasn't performing all these sacrifices in order to please the supreme personality of godhead rather he wanted immortality for himself and he was actually he wanted to go against the established order of the lord he wanted to build a staircase which would take the um, people directly uh, to the heavenly planets of indra without considering any kind of necessary qualifications you know to we have read and studied that um it depending on what your activities are you are given this next destination it could be the heavenly planets it could be the hellish planets it could be vaikuntha it could be goloka vrindavan but that depends on the qualifications now here ravana was so full of uh, pride that he wanted to go against the established order of the lord and he wanted to do something which was not correct and he was performing austerities in order to gain immortality so this is considered to be a sacrifice which is performed in the mode of passion obviously tinged a little bit with ignorance but more in the mode of passion huh? and likewise then we know the story of hiranyakashipu where he performed such severe sacrifices and um as we can see in the picture then brahma ji came and gave him the uh the boon that he asked for and we all know that you know um he both, both these personalities as you can see that they were not performing sacrifices for material benefits so that then they could please the lord like let's say that you know a devotee is asking for um immortality which of course even brahma ji cannot give but let's say a long life or you know for years and years and maybe centuries but a devotee is asking for that so that he can spread the message of krishna all over the world and he is like pralad maharaj after all this incident when narsingha they wanted to give him a boon what did pralad maharaj say he asked for a long life he asked he didn't ask for a long life he said please let me be here till there is even a single soul who is suffering in this material world so pralad maharaj is also asking for immortality in that sense but he is doing it so that he can dedicate his entire life for the glory for the supreme personality of god so you see the difference that you know it's not what you're asking for it is how you're asking so therein comes the uh, mode of passion so as soon as you are asking for material benefits in order for your own sense gratification in order to fulfill your pride and ego in order to get fame or whatever else that is is considered to be um sacrifices in the mode of passion and we also heard yesterday from divinam prabhu that in this age you anyways cannot perform any of these sacrifices so if like you know tomorrow i decide that i am going to like you know uh, do austerities like ravana i don't want to but just in case i feel that i want to um i cannot i cannot because we don't this yuga is not meant for these kinds of sacrifices we don't have those kinds of long lives we don't have the ability that we would be able to um you know perform these austerities without food and water and standing like this on one leg and hiranyakashipu had antils around him so imagine you know what was happening he was almost he was almost going to die he was as you can see half of his body has has turned into skeleton so we are not able to perform those kind of sacrifices in this yuga and <clears throat> only sacrifice that one can perform here is the sankirtan yagya the sankirtan yagya the chanting of the holy name and i'm just going to um stop my slide share for a minute hmm. Just give me one minute, please. Oh, share, yeah. Okay, so so in this yoga, we obviously cannot perform any other kind of austerities except for the sankirtan yoga. And what I wanted to share with you all is just one. Um, I'm going to read this. 
there's this very very beautiful verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam sixth canto, and it says, if a person unaware of the effective potency of a certain medicine takes that medicine or is forced to take it, it will act even without his knowledge because its potency does not depend on the patient's understanding. Similarly, even though one does not know the value of chanting the holy name of the Lord, if one chants knowingly or unknowingly, the chanting will be very effective. Right? So I just wanted to share this, this verse with this verse with you because it is so, so potent. Imagine this, and it's so true if you think about it. When the doctor is giving us some medicine, we don't sit, I mean, most of us, I think I should say that we don't sit down to read the ingredients of what it is and what is the medicine that he is giving us and how it is going to act on us. Immaterial of the knowledge, we don't have that knowledge, but it is still acting. As soon as we take it, it is acting. Same way, whether you know or you don't know, whether you have the knowledge how this Mahamantra is going to work on you or you don't know, it still is going to work its magic because that's how powerful it is. And if you think about it, when Srila Prabhupada went to the West, to the US, and the first people who were um, coming to him or taking this up were um, people who were in, in those days called hippies, right? They were, you know, many of them were uh, taking intoxicants. They were not following any kinds of principles, regulative principles or anything. But the magic of the Mahamantra, the potency of the Mahamantra worked on each one of them. And so many of them, it's been more than 50 years and they are still so, so dedicated to Krishna consciousness. So what we have to understand is in this age, the only sacrifice that all of us can do is the Sankirtan Yagya. Distributing of Prabhupada books, reading of Prabhupada books and chanting. Prabhupada always said this, that the reason why you need to read the book this, yeah. Prabhupada said many a times that the reason why you should be reading these books is not so that you become scholars and intellectuals in scriptures, but so that you get the faith in the chanting of the holy name. When you read, like when, when I'm reading this, as soon as I read this verse from the sixth canto, you know, obviously it starts affecting you, your consciousness that, that this Maha Mantra is so potent. I should not take it lightly and I must with full concentration, focus, full surrender, faith, chant the holy names. And that is the, that is the sacrifice that one has to perform. And that is the sacrifice that you will then transcend all the modes, ignorance, passion, and goodness. When you're chanting the Maha Mantra with complete surrender, with complete sincerity, even if you chant just say one mantra, and that time, for that moment, you have transcended all these modes and you have gone beyond the modes. So I thought that is, um, that is this verse, very, very powerful. Very important for us to understand how sometimes even when we are performing devotional activities, we might come under the influence of modes of passion and ignorance and how we can be aware that check my consciousness um, why am I doing this? Am I doing this for the pleasure of the devotees, for the pleasure of Srila Prabhupada, for the pleasure of the Lord? Or am I doing this because I think I'm going to get name and fame and recognition because of this? So be careful when we are performing our devotional activities also. So I think I will stop here. And if there are any questions or comments, corrections, realizations, please, um, please share with us. Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna. I cannot see the name for some reason. Okay. Uh, who is this? It's Kanta. Yes, Kanta Mataji. Kanta. You know, it's chanting. It's regarding chanting. Hmm? I just want to share something. It's from uh, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Yeah. He says, your mind is wandering all over the universe when you chant. But chant anyway. Your mind is wandering to the past and future 
when you chant, but chant anyway. You are not able to concentrate on Krishna's names while you chant. Chant anyway. You have no taste for chanting. Chant anyway. You have lusty desires. Chant anyway. You are making offenses in chanting. Chant anyway. You are not praying to Krishna to help you chant better. Chant anyway. You often chant late at night. Chant anyway. So why should you chant despite all the above obstacles? This is why. There is no vow like chanting the holy name, no knowledge superior to it, no meditation which comes anywhere near it, and it gives the highest result. Thank you so much for sharing, Kantamataji. That is such a beautiful poem by Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and so deep as well. And when you were talking about the mind, I was thinking about recently, I was listening to a lecture by Suttapa Prabhu. Probably all of you must have heard it because it was in the morning at the manor. And he was talking about how the mind, he said the mind is Markata, it's a monkey. The mind is a monkey. But not that it is just a monkey. It is a monkey that has been bitten by a scorpion, he said. So it is a monkey that has been bitten by a scorpion and not just that, it's a monkey that is being um, uh, um, troubled by ghost. Yeah. So he was giving all of these things that that is, your mind is that. And that's why your mind will constantly, like a monkey, which is jumping from here to there, to there, to there, it will constantly keep doing that. And all that you have to do is try and just bring it back. There are, there are other things, you know. Uh, our acharyas say that every morning and every evening you must hit your mind with <laughs> so, so that see the thing is to, to to realize that i am not the mind even i am not the mind intelligence or false ego i am not this body yes but i am not even those all i am is this soul that's what i am that's my true identity and that is why even when my mind or my intelligence is taking me somewhere else or my false ego is acting on me, I must try and bring it back again. And for that, obviously, I can't do it on my own. So I take shelter of, um, you know, um, Krishna, of our acharyas, of other devotees, association, all of that. Thank you so much, Kanta Mataji, for sharing. That is so beautiful. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Any other realizations, questions, comments? Mataji, yes. Hare Krishna. Puja Mataji here. Now, yes. Now, just want to know the difference between Sankirtan Yagna and the chanting that we do on our rounds at home, all on our own. I know Sankirtan is you do chanting and segregation in a group. And uh, chanting at home, we do on our own. So one is called one is called your japa. Your japa is when you're chanting on your own. At yes. you're chanting like that. And the other is sankirtan. Sankirtan is when you are chanting in a group. Sang. Sang means sang and kirtan. So you're doing it together. Now that yes. together chanting could be in the temple, could be in your homes when you have sanghas, could be on the streets when you're doing kirtan. So that is sankirtan yagya. Now the now if you know that Mahaprabhu, he started this sankirtan yagya. Right. The point is that when you are chanting um, together as a group, of course, the sound vibration is transcendental. Yeah. That's one thing. But the other main essential point that Prabhupada is trying to, uh, for him, the mission is that when you're chanting outside and when people are listening to it, there are so many people who will get benefit out of listening. Prabhupada said, even if a person listens to the Mahamantra even once he is benefiting. And if even if you say, you know, Krishna jokingly, offensively, as a teasing way, even then you are benefiting. So suppose like, you know, all of us are doing a Sankirtan Yagya and chanting and there's somebody who makes fun of you. Ah, these Hare Krishnas. Even that will benefit. Just the point that the person has said the name of Hari. That is also 
and that why we must do sankirtan yagya so that more and more people more and more living entities forget about human beings living entities if they listen if they hear when you are chanting in the garden you know the leaves the trees the birds and bees and worms and whoever is listening is benefited that is the potency of the mantra okay hare krishna mata ji thank you anybody else hare krishna mata ji thank you very much for the wonderful class as usual your analogies are so good they are so brilliant it just it is so simple to understand and the uh, big concepts it's not my <laughs> rupa mata ji not mine at all and no, no, it's always good and is japa uh, uh, a yagya just as sankirtan is a yagya so japa on my on our own when we chant is that a yagya as well that is a sacrifice because you're sacrificing you're sacrificing your time your energy your you know you wake up in the morning so you are sacrificing and you're doing it for the pleasure of the lord you're not doing it for your own pleasure remember that when we're doing japa we pray that krishna i want to chant attentively i want to chant sincerely i want to chant submissively for your pleasure because it gives you pleasure that's why i want to chant so as soon as you're doing any activity for the pleasure of krishna it is a yagya whatever is a, whatever sacrifice you are doing it for the pleasure of krishna okay, okay. lovely thank you hari krishna hari krishna mata ji yes um uh, mata ji so then would you say even offering prasadam is a yagna of course everything that we do everything that we are doing in the sense no i'll tell you what it is sacrifice generally means the yagya which obviously then we think of it as the fire sacrifice but when roba is talking about yagya in our um the verse that i'll just go to that verse one second yeah. so he says that uh ta -ta -ta. the lord created this material world to enable the, uh, enable the conditioned souls to learn how to perform yagya sacrifices for the satisfaction of vishnu now there are so many various kind of sacrifices like we know the most famous sacrifice where um nanda maharaj used to perform the sacrifices to indra and then krishna stopped him and also we know of that sacrifice we know of various other kind of sacrifices where we are offering oblations into the fire that's a sacrifice anything that you're doing so it says sacrifice means it's a ceremony that you perform to please the lord when you're offering bhoga right it's not it's not like you know that um, you're sacrificing your food so in that sense it's not but it's something that you're doing for the pleasure of the lord so it doesn't it doesn't necessarily come under sacrifice because the word sacrifice means that you are uh, kind of you know um how to say um, no that's austerity so yes sacrifice anything for the pleasure but in this chapter you will see we will discuss even the different kinds of food so we'll have that as separately but when you're offering bhoga to the lord yes it is a sacrifice because you have taken an effort you are in your consciousness thinking i am preparing this for the pleasure of the lord and then you offer that bhoga and then you eat that as a prasad so yes it is a sacrifice you're doing this for him you're not you are not uh, cooking things for your own sense gratification you are not cooking those things which you are not able to the to offer to the lord because think about it otherwise you would um, if i mean i'm not saying but you know people would then cook anything and everything or uh, they would go out and eat and propa talks about that in some of his purpose because 50 years back there wasn't that much of a uh um what is that thing culture of you know restaurants and whatever which is there today but why is it then as devotees we try i'm not saying that you know we don't do it at all but we try to have only krishna prasad that is a sacrifice otherwise i could be you know eating whatever from anywhere every single day so it's a sacrifice that i am not giving into my um sense gratification and sense pleasure but rather i'm doing it for the um happiness of the lord and then having krishna prasad so yes that's a sacrifice thank you so much 
his chin a head like that yes yes and you know like uh, because we are offering food we, we are cooking the food and we are not tasting the food mm. so when you without tasting that is also austerity correct correct yeah that's five from our side correct so you know the the point where we are the moment we are putting krishna in the center because think about it otherwise we would eat all kinds of food why is it that you know we don't cook with onion we don't cook with garlic we don't have foods that are uh, not allowed you know we don't have tea why is it that with so it is a sacrifice that we are doing it is a sacrifice for the pleasure of krishna am i right krishna mani mata ji yes mata ji thank you thank you mata ji for adding that anybody else any other questions comments okay it looks like everybody is satisfied with what we have discussed so if that is the case then we can stop now wonderful class thank so, you and thank you to all mataji thank you everybody thank you thank very much wonderful madhu mataji fantastic hari hari thank you so much thank you thank you mataji wonderful class hari krishna thank you wonderful class mataji hari krishna thank you so much as all thank you so much